Yeah, hi Vinas, uh, this is Dr. Srikant from Team MDS Conquer. Now I'm just going to give a brief glance of how you need to handle subject endo from entrance point of view. Okay, so before going into the contents, uh, I want to show utmost gratitude uh, to the entire uh, staff of Vishnu Dental College as well as St. Joseph Dental College for mounting me what I am today. Special gratitude and thanks to Dr. Girija Sajan, my HOD, and Dr. Ram Babu, my guide, who has helped me a lot to be here in front of you. Okay, so uh, coming into the details of endo, so before going into endo, I can tell you that not being an endodontist, but what I can tell you like endo is one of the easiest subject in the entrance point of view. Endo along with pedo. Pedo is again the one more easiest clinical subject. So when I'm preparing also, I feel like endo, I used to finish it very, very fast. And second important thing, endo is interesting. And endo, you're, you're being learning endo from long back, like in your third year, you started your pulp and periapical lesions, diseases and everything. So endo can be done fast, endo can be done simple, right? So first important thing I want to stress on is endo is being integrated with pedo contents. That is, you have your pediatric endodontics where you're going to cover apexogenesis, apexifications, your pulp regenerations, vital pulp therapies, and pulpotomies, pulpectomies, and all these are part of endo which are being integrated to the pedo. So, of course, endo is being integrated to the perio also. That is endoperio lesion. Endo is being integrated to the perio. That is endoperio lesion. So, endo is being integrated to the oral surgery also. Not very specific, but your apexectomies. Okay. So, your periapical surgeries, your micro surgeries are a part of your oral surgery also. It is being integrated to your microbiology. Okay. So, that is your oral microbiology. So endodontic microbiology is a part of your oral micro. So it's being integrated to the so many subjects and according to the neat blueprint, okay, I can allocate there will be 10 plus score from endo exclusively. Of course, endo plus cons, it's going to hit somewhere around like 14 to 16 plus for sure, definitely, but endo exclusively going to be more than eight or 10 plus in your need. And coming to INICT, endo is an upgraded subject. Lots of importance, like you'll have 10, 10 to 12 questions on endodontics exclusively in the INICT. Okay, a, a subject which has lots of demand, subject which has lots of waiters. Right, coming to the individual topics and the contents, what you have to do from endo, okay, I can list out them as first is a diagnosis. So in diagnosis, you have to cover pulpal diseases, periapical diseases, pulpal plus periapical diseases, that is your American Association of Endodontics classifications. Everything has to be done which are not there in your textbooks, which are important. So in diagnosis point of view, you need to cover like uh, the diagnostic aids. Okay, the diagnostic aids, you need to cover your pulp vitality test has to be covered. Pulp sensibility test has to be covered. The recent pulp vitality like your pulse oximetry, laser Doppler flowmetry has to be covered top to bottom. So everything was covered in the smart videos, no need to worry. The second important uh, content of endo is your pulp and pulpal diseases. Means your pulp histology has to be done. So if you see recent NEET or INICT questions that is given in 2020-21, there are questions on pulpal uh, zones, the zones of the pulp, there are questions on uh, fish zones. Okay, there are many things which are moving around the histology of the pulp which are very, very important from examination point of view. And the next one is periapical diseases. Periapical diseases has to be done. So these are like pulpal diseases and periapical diseases are your part of your oral path and oral medicine, right? Which has to be done top to bottom. Then the next fourth one I want to stress on is anatomy of the pulp. So regularly your dental anatomy is going to cover the external anatomy. Now you will be focusing more on the internal anatomy. So in this internal anatomy, Okay, you need to learn about the number of canals in each teeth, number of roots in each teeth. Okay, what is the extra canals that you found? Like, for example, if you take 2020 INICT question, the percentage of mandibular centrals having two canals, 41.4 is a question directly from the contents of your internal anatomy. So apart from this internal anatomy, there are questions which frequently ask, like veins classification, vertices classification of your root canals, 
is a frequently asked question. Even in your 2021 NEET, there is a question on the veins and vertices classification. Okay, so which are very, very important. So simultaneously, you need to cover the loss of orifice, loss of orifice openings and everything, which are a part of your axis opening also in the internal anatomy. The next one is your axis opening. So the basics of axis opening, the objectives of axis opening, okay, so the different types of axis opening techniques, what are the latest advanced axis opening techniques like your ninja technique, most conservative axis opening techniques, okay, so these are the advanced things that you have to make a note apart from the regular thing. So most favorite question for axis opening, the main purpose of axis opening is to provide a straight line access to the apical foramen. But there are few things, advanced things that you have to make a note, you have to learn, okay. So once you're done with axis opening, the next one is working length, different types of working length, Okay, so different methods of analyzing the working lens. What is a Wien's modification? What is Ingels modification? What is Grossman's method of identifying the working lens? What is a grid method of identifying the working lens? What is the best method of knowing the working lens? That is your combination of your radiographic and non-radiographic technique. So they can ask you what is the radiographic techniques? Which of the following is a non-radiographic technique? They can ask you the different generations of apex locators. Okay, nowadays examples of generations of apex locators may not be asked because, because it's completely a memory based. But long back, five years back, we used to have a questions on I, uh, which of the following is an example of a third generation of apex locator. What are the recent apex locators that are available? So now apex locators are being uh, in combination with the endo mode. So they come under which generation? So all these questions are the regular questions that can be asked. So for example, if you see 2016 uh, NEET or AAPG, you have a question like, which is the type of uh, working length determination in the case of open apex? That is by using your paper points, okay? So such questions like where apex locators are contraindicated. So all these are the questions of choice. So when I'm talking about the working length. So next comes the working length. Okay, so it's better you, you start your instrumentation here. So what are the different types of instruments? What is DG16? What is CK17? So instruments which are used, what is endo axis opening bar? What is Z bar? Okay. So what are the instruments which are used at different levels? During axis opening, what are used? During biomechanical preparation, what are used? During obturation, what are used? During post and core, what are used? What are your GG drills? What are your piezo emers? So all these are the diagram based questions or a conceptual questions they can ask you for. So next, talking about the instrumentation, you need to learn about the different types of tapers. What are the advantages of smaller taper? What are the disadvantages or the advantages of larger taper? What type of taper you have to use in the in the modern endodontics? Okay, so cross sections of your files. What is file? What is reamer? What is H file? What is K file? What is Frixogate? And all these are the questions which are frequently asked. Cross sections of the files is a diagram based question that is given in the recent INI CET2. So you need to learn top to bottom, simple, easy to understand, and easy to glance. So make a note, uh, any instrumentation, you need to learn about the rotary instrumentation because INICET, so there are many, many questions on the rotary instrumentation. What are different generations of rotary files? What are the recent files? What is SAF? Okay, what is the cross-section of a pro-taper? Okay, so there are many, many such things that are regularly, constantly hitting on the question paper. So this is about instrumentation. You need to learn about the recent instrumentation too. Different types of irrigation devices you have to use. For example, if you take SR ship papers of endo, there is a question of epexum. Epexum is something that is known by a PG student, but it is not to the level of an UG. It is nowhere there in any textbook. Okay, it's an article based question. So, what is epexum basically? Okay, where it is used? What is the advantage of epexum? What is the speed of epexum? So, all these are the series of questions which are given in SR ship papers of endo which you have to do it. There is no, you cannot escape from this because AIMS people, uh, they regularly have a habit of picking this SR ship concepts or SR ship questions directly. So you need to do top to bottom of these particular areas. So once you're done with the instrumentation, that is regular traditional instrumentation as well as the advanced instrumentation, the next thing I want to stress on is biomechanical preparation. So what are the different types of biomechanical preparation? You learn so many step back and all these like uh, from where you move from apex to coronal, coronal to apex, what are the different types of techniques they can ask you, advantages of techniques, they can tell you this particular canal, which type of biomechanical preparation you can use. So what is the master cone? What is the initial apical file? What is master apical file? How many times you have to increase? Okay, which has more advantages, which has disadvantages, all these content has to be done top to bottom. 
the next one is i want to stress on obturation so i hope you know the obturation techniques what is lateral condensation vertical compaction what is uh, thermal related obturation techniques okay so what is thermomechanical obturation technique okay the diagrams the instruments devices what is obtura one what is obtura two up to what temperature they are heated up okay so all these are the most commonly and frequent last for example i can tell you like the mode of obturation technique in the case of your post and core the answer is chicago technique which is also called a sectional obturation technique so what is apical seal so all these concepts are very very important in the obturation objectives of obturation are very very important so next one once you're done with obturation then i want to stress on post and core of course post and core is a part of both of your prosthodontics as well as your end when you do post and core what are the recent post and core techniques so what is uh like what what are the recent techniques what is a metal post different types and shapes of metal post was a question that is frequently repeated in our inict you have tapered post you have serrated tapered post so you have you have a parallel post you have a non parallel post so there are many other diagram based questions that are frequently moving around this area and what are the recent posts that are available like which which mimics the coefficient of thermal expansion value with the dentin okay so what are these recent posts okay so there are many many endocrowns there are many uh, few recent things that you have to focus on because questions are being stressed like there is one or two questions on the recent advances itself which ug students are less familiar of so i'll try my best to uh, explain these contents integrate these contents and let's learn and at the best so once you are done with this as i stressed on that is your endodontic microbiology is an important area what we have done is endodontic microbiology we have prepared a video called as oral microbiology where we have included endodontic plus periodontal microbiology which is very very important in examination point of view has to be done top to bottom because i'm being seeing a series of questions on this area both in 2018 2017 2019 2021 20, both in inict there is a being question thrown from oral microbiology oral microbiology is a very very important aspect which you should not skip or neglect done so so these are the main contents that you have to focus on then comes your endodontic microsurgery okay so your periapical surgery is how they are associated with the microscope what is the difference between the traditional surgery and periapical surgery what are the instruments that are being used your uh, periapical piezoelectric instrument based questions like which is used to cut the bone that is used both for the implants as well as the periapical bone removal is a frequent question that is being stressed and that is being asked even in the recent inict they are being asking what is the material with which it is made up of okay so all these questions are the questions which are frequently moving around and frequently being asked so in this endodontic microbiology you can add a note about intentional reimplantation reimplantation is trauma but intentional reimplantation is removing and keeping it atraumatic extraction followed by reimplantation uh, is a question that is being asked recently Uh, then comes after the endodontic microbiology i want to add a note about the trauma trauma you need to learn about elis classification i hope most of you are familiar with it you need to learn about the andresen's who classification and you need to learn about the treatment plan for each and every class what you need to do for concussion what you need to do for primary trauma what happens if you do an enamel fracture dentinal fracture pulpal fracture within this time okay avulsion within this time avulsion after this time so all these are a series of questions that are being frequently repeated in your examination so what are the materials of choice to carry an avulsor tooth all these are again a questions which the paper setters loves to ask so we are done with trauma we are done with this and i want to add a note about the pulpal vitality procedures pulpal your direct pulp capping indirect pulp capping pulpotomies pulpectomies all these comes under this list which you are very very familiar with right so once we are done with this uh, i want to stress on endoperio lesions okay so the relationship of endo and perio so what is primary endo what is secondary perio so you have a beautiful classification so you need to learn which treatment has to be done first what has to be done like your hemi session your bicuspidization your root root recession root and recessions so all these comes under a part of your endoperiolations so once we are done with endoperiolations okay so the next important thing i want to stress on is regenerative endodontics okay which is a topic being neglected in many 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 areas okay so it's not there on the uh, 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 mcqs were not there on the books but aims 
is frequently asking questions on this particular area which you should not neglect so i just want to add a note about the bleaching different types of bleaching procedures okay what is non vital bleaching what is vital bleaching what are the materials that are most commonly used and a technical knowledge of how bleaching is done and how bleaching procedures are done so yes obturation i have okay obturation along with obturation you need to do disinfections so what are the materials that are used for disinfection because there were questions on uh, naocl in the recent need so what are the materials used what is the percentage of materials used what is the advantage of the this particular material what is the disadvantage of this material what are the tests that are associated with with this what is the sequence of irrigation solution that is used so all these are the most commonly asked or most frequently asked questions from endo prospect okay so i'm just going to give a brief glance so these are the 17 or 18 uh, topics that you have to do from endo okay which are being integrated with many other subjects so diagnosis it's well explained in the smart video you can finish it fast pulpal diseases and pulpal histology you are well familiar periapical diseases is well familiar so you can you can integratedly do this first three topics so anatomy external anatomy can be integrated to the internal anatomy that is your dental anatomy plus internal anatomy of the pulp here your anatomy is being linked to the opening axis opening okay and make sure your instrumentation working length biomechanical preparation and obturation and disinfection has to be done simultaneously post and core is a prosthetic part it's a different part okay endodontic microbiology is a very short thing which which can be done in one hour maximum 60 minutes you can spend a time of 60 minutes trauma is a good thing more of an a conceptual thing no need to mug up anything except the andersons wh box classification and uh, your pulp vital procedures is a known thing endoperiolation is a known thing okay regenerative endodontics is not going to take more than 30 minutes it's going to take maximum 30 minutes and uh, bleaching is going to take maximum 1 to 2 hours okay so integrately you can sit for like 5 days spending 8 hours 5 8 hours is going to be a perfect time to finish pack revise and do a proper mcqs from endo so what you need to do where you need to do i, I feel like grossman is more than sufficient for you until unless you are done with grossman and you want to maintain some high fi book make sure uh, my first preference is to go with ingel ingel is too heavy even for a pg student it is too heavy so i don't suggest a uh, uc to read ingel for an entrance point of view for a 5 or 6 days of internship okay few me few people they may read 10 days but uh, my my allocation for endo is going to be like 6 or 7 days maximum right so grossman you can keep as a basic reference and coming to the uh, question solving aspect uh, I, i strongly recommend you to go ahead with the dentist so dentist is good for endo and of course we will try to provide as much content as possible on the on the website okay so you'll have your daily uh, topic specific practice as well as a subject specific practice including your diagram based questions on the endo from my point of view i'll try to provide a, a minimum of 500 to 600 questions on endo on the website which you have to do integrated with the smart videos we'll try to provide as much content as possible with the smart videos and of course case based questions of endo are very very important because inicet there is many questions which are given on the case based and of course as neat is being integrated nowadays there are chances that they can extend this case based questions of endo also for us clear so this is all about endo endo has to be done with interest endo is easy okay trust me i'll make sure from team mds conquer that endo is going to be the simplest subject among the list for your preparation done for now signing off dr shrikant from team mds conquer bye take care